You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Bennion Rowe. Well, yeah, of course. If they could swallow it from both ends, that's quite impressive. Oh, hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Uh, oui, ça va. Molto bene. Comment vous pour? No, I don't wait for. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for us today, Mike? I've got a story about it all kicking off in a gym. And then we get our favourite TV cook to show us how to be a great homemaker in Everybody Loves Fanny. We even have a game that you can play along with too. But on your screen now, you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. And just like that, you can see the names of people who've reached out on their social media going along the bottom of the screen. But now we have Mist and the Showbiz. So, it's uh, a lot gloomier in the world now thanks to Trump being back in power. It, uh, it was a quite a horrific situation. Yeah, it doesn't even take charge yet. Well... I dread to think what's actually going to happen, but he's promised several things that are going to happen from day one. Um, whether they'll pull them off or not is... is, is... Can he just not be a <laughs> from day one? Uh, that's, that, that really wasn't on the resume. Um, and to be fair, hasn't got the mandate for that. He's got the mandate to do what the f he wants, which is really horrible. Oh. But it is not all total gloom oh, yeah. stateside because um, there have been a few people that got through in the election that was a bit of time ago. Sarah McBride, first openly transgender person to be elected to the House of Representatives. Nice. Yeah. Finally, we have some representation in the House of Representation. Well, she is... Uh, a <laughs> very good point. <laughs> um, she's not exactly um, unknown to the world of the uh, political sphere in America. She actually um, started out as the intern for Barack Obama. OK. So was breaking ground then, being the first transgender person to be um, uh, working in the White House. So they're used to trailblazing, but now they've got a real solid position in government. Which, considering how poorly things went for Kamala Harris, it's, it's, it's good to know that some people got through the cracks and, and they're good people. Yeah. They shouldn't be getting people through the cracks, though. They should just be getting in. Well, she's not the only one, thankfully. Okay. There are more, so there is, is good news. Um, but I would say she was the headliner. OK. Um, we also have Katura Heron. Okay. Um, the first LGBT person of colour elected to the Kentucky State Senate. Okay. Uh, Rashum Kemp, first openly gay black man to be the state senator for Georgia's 38th district. There's also Gabby Salinas, uh, an out woman in Tennessee legislator. Legislature? Legislature. It's a very difficult word to get your mouth word around that one. Legislature. <laughs> There's also Molly Cook, um, who's... I love Molly Cook just for their name. It is quite a good name. Molly Cook. Um, they're in the Texas Senate. And there's also Emily Randall, who's the first Latina, gay Latina, in Washington State Legislature. It's that word again. I can't say it. Le legislate. Legislature. Le legislature. We should run it together, it's easier to say. Well, that's what I was trying to like do. Chitty chitty bang bang. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's... Out of the few people that got elected on that side of the fence over in America, um, there's a good chunk of them that are from our... our calibre. Community. Community, that's the better word that's for it. That's the word. We're not, we're not guns. <laughs> Although if we were in America, we might be. Yeah. So hopefully they'll keep fighting the good fight and best of luck to you, honestly. Um, it's, it's going to be hard over there. Also, you may not have caught it during the election because there was a lot of celebrity endorsement for Kamala Harris. There was. Very late on celebrity endorsement. Yeah, but it was at least there. One of the ones that you would have potentially missed mm. was Beyonce. OK. Now, she did a really weird thing. Well, first she came out uh, to, uh, to um, sponsor Kamala Harris. But, yeah, she dressed up as characters from Barbed Wire and Baywatch, basically Pamela Anderson, um, to endorse Kamala Harris. Well, and to encourage people to vote, because I don't think they can... Um, 
endorse a particular candidate in promoting the voting. There's some rule, re, weird so rules got, about that. So they careful on how they promote. Yeah. They, so they can promote people voting mm -hmm. and they can promote the candidate. Yep. But they can't promote people to vote for the candidate. Exactly. So that's how Elon Musk got away with that sweepstake thing of mm -hmm. make sure you vote and they'll be, you can be being a lottery for a few million quid or whatever it was. Um, but, yeah, she took a different approach by dressing up as Pamela Anderson. Why? Did she have the costume left over from Halloween? <laughs> I think it was a little bit to do with Halloween, actually, yes. And, and also a bit of promoting a trilogy of albums, of two of which are out, I think. Okay. Um, she's I'm, had more than three albums, though. No, I know she's had more than three albums, but I think this one's a, a, tri a set. Right. And the third one is about to come out. I don't really know much about Beyonce, but I so did... So glad you don't do the celebrity news. No. But it, I have to admit, that these, this dress-up of hers, this costuming, is, is pretty amazing. She looks hot in the middle one. She, she does. Did you ever watch Barbed Wire as a movie? No. It's a dreadful movie, famously dreadful, um, but it's all set in an American civil war that kicked off in 2017. So maybe it was more prophetic than you thought. Um, but anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, if it is a Halloween, where's this one from? I get the Baywatch. I get this one, but I don't get the, the Barbie pink thing. Um, I believe that's another image, another costume from the barbed wire thing, but I don't okay. actually know. Okay. <laughs> because I didn't do the research. Anyway, moving from politics, let's go to royalty. So there's been um, a few supposedly gay royals. There's a place in, now by London, that, down there, that there, London. Called down, down that there, London. That had a lord in it that was like 20th in line to the throne. He was famously gay. Came out in the 70s because he was outed. Oh, uh, well, no, we're going further back. Lord Montague. Back. Lord Montague. Well, we're yeah. going a bit further back than that, and then also right up to present day. So you've got Edward II of England, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, Frederick the Great of Prussia. Mm -hmm. Isabella of Parma. Isabella of Parma, famous uh, for a ham. Famous for ham. Um, and even William III of England as well. Now, I don't know my history, so I don't know whether this is just known or fact. William of III, he was the co-regent, wasn't he? You, you know better than me. However, this is all lead up to, um, let's say, that things uh, in history would have been a bit more difficult to be out and free when okay. you've got to sire children, to carry on the line, etc. Well, I'm here. <laughs> I'm second generation queer. Yes, but you're not royalty. Well, I've been called an old queen before now. Well, that's true enough. Um, no, right up to date, we have a um, Indian prince who has... Yeah, there they go. Um, that's Prince Manvendra Singh Gohil and Prince DeAndre Richardson. They're celebrating 10 years of marriage. Well, 11 now. Uh, His Ho Royal Highness, the Prince Manvendra, um, he's a scion of the Gohil Rajput dynasty. Mm -hmm. So a very, 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 very long line of Indian princes. Um, they governed a large swathe of land, um, basically until a small um, Victorian force might have... Okay. Yeah. Um, so they were in charge until then. Um, the family, as a, as a royal family, does still exist, but they don't have any power whatsoever. Not a constitutional monarch. No, no. There's no political status there, but they are prominent in terms of the social scene and charitable deeds and That's stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so which one is the prince? Which well, one? they're both princes. OK, which one is the, the one with the bloodline? That would be that one. OK. And the other one is the one with a massive ring. Um, yeah, well, basically, they uh, met in America. Um, originally, uh, Manvendra was married by an arranged management in the early 90s, um, but he came out in 2005. Um, Prince DeAndre, uh, he was born in Oregon. OK. Yeah, uh, so Pacific Northwest. It's very liberal in Oregon. Yeah. So they got together, they got married um, in 2013. At that time, mm -hmm. India's laws were still that it was illegal over there. So, in the eyes of the law, their own prince was a criminal. Okay. But thanks to their effort and work over the past 10 years, it's completely changed the situation over there. 
Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, part of their 10 year celebration was bringing out a book and celebrating all that they've done and managed to achieve and their love together. There were lots of quotes from the article I read and they were quite sickeningly in love, um, which is lovely. Well, that's good. I'm happy for them. Yeah, and it's, it's nice to have a couple of gay royals right up there. And I, I quite like the fact that he's given someone, one of them's been given a pearl necklace. Oh, they've both got pearl necklaces on. Hmm. Obviously switches. <laughs> <laughs> well, one would hate to speculate. But will do anyway. <laughs> which one's the top, which one's the bottom? Um, bottom. We'll call it bottom. <laughs> Considering where his beard's worn out at the sides there, yeah. I think that's design. I, I, I think I think that's rubbing marks. We really should be talking. We might be we might be um, uh, sent to have our heads chopped off by talking about rimming. The royals rimming. Royals rim. A right royal rimming. <laughs> anyway, that's enough for the celebrity showbiz this week. I just know that a royal wants to take my head because of rimming. <laughs> Anyway, stick around as next is Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Curd with Mist and Mike, and now we go into the deeper parts of the internet as it's Mike and the Buzz. How do you feel about conkers? I, 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 I loved playing with conkers when I was a kid. Okay. Did you know that there is a, a championship of conquerors? I did know there was a cha In fact, I believe there was a recent scandal. It was a scandalo? Yes. 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 Uh, this is David Jenkins, who's 82. Old enough to know better. Who, who won. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it was his first win. There he is. Serious man, serious man. Um, it was his first win. Okay. Okay. Since he's been been doing the conquering for eighty two years. No, no, he, he's eighty two. He's been flinging his conquers about since nineteen seventy seven. Basically, had a, a f kerfuffle as someone found him with a steel version of a conquer in his pocket. A, a steel nut. A steel conquer. That's that that's that's definitely like I've heard of people like soaking them in vinegar and cooking mm. them in an oven and all sorts of it. Having a steel one is, is definitely up there in the light realms of cheating. Right. Now, he said, no, didn't, didn't use it. It's just there as a joke one. Right. Well, if, if it's big and shiny and silver, it, then you could... painted. Exactly. So that does rather suggest that he was a cheating bastard. Well, and other people were saying, well, his conkers were very strong, so they kept breaking other ones in half and stuff. And yep. it's like, OK, that's obviously... He has been exonerated. Oh, really? It was found not to have been used. Uh, how did they discern that? They've decided it stayed in his pocket the entire time. And how did they discern that? They went, it stayed in his pocket the entire time. He's, he's innocent. Yeah, but how did they prove an evidence and, and, and it's determine not caught. that? You see, that's the thing. They don't have to. They can just say, the organisers can just say, he didn't use it, it's fine, it's done. I, I don't think that's the appropriate due diligence. Well, they've decided he didn't didn't cheat, so he didn't cheat. He looks. Look at him. Look at him. That's the face of a cheat. Okay, and that's why you're not selected for juries ever. <laughs> he looked guilty. Well, he got that Trump face on, hasn't he? He's thinking. He's about to smack a conker. He, he's he's thinking. How how can I pretend? Yeah. Well, uh, what's happened is the turn. Around. Some people said, well, he was also helping new entrants pick their conkers. So he... Here, take this one. It's really soft and get really busted up by a steel nut. No, but he was sort of like apparently marked with marking strings and things. So people, when they were picking their conkers, go, oh, that one feels a bit soft and mark it so he didn't pick it. Because you don't just go with a conker and use it. Mm -hmm. and pick a conker per Oh, you don't have your one special conker? No, 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 because that wouldn't, you'd die quite quickly. Everybody knows that the person that wins the first round of conkers loses the second or the third, right? Unless you're me and varnish them. Well, that's, an, that's another classic way of cheating. Yeah, but everyone goes, oh, you can tell it's shiny. No, what you do is wait till it's tacky and then touch it all over so it wasn't shiny anymore. You did some Cooking naughty them. things in your Baking primary them. school, didn't you? Baking them doesn't help because mm -hmm. that just cooks them and makes them soft and delicious. Um, putting them in vinegar also softens them. Right, you want something that hardens them. And what you need to do is you need to dehydrate them, so salt rubs and then um, varnish and then tack it when it's If tacky. they're softer, though, do they not take a blow better? 
No. Okay. Because then when you, you crack I know things that are softer that can take up a good, good blow. <laughs> it's been a long time, hasn't it, Mist? <laughs> it really has. It's been 84 years. Now, which worries me, <coughs> because my next story... Mm-hmm. Some tissue. Okay. Okay. Do you know who Joey Swole is? Yes, I do. Well, you know why you've got the tissue, don't you? <laughs> yes, do. um, I'm a big fan of him. I follow him. Uh -huh. I mm. do too, because he is so body positive. Yeah, really body positive and, and a real, true demonstration of the gym culture I know. Um, and, and, and not all, like, especially with the whole social, social media generation and trying to fit it, video themselves in the gym and, and just about the aesthetic and other people cramping that style or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that is not the gym culture I've ever been brought up with yeah. or no. I, I just, I follow him just because he's so positive about everybody's body. And he's very easy on the eye himself. He is hideously attractive. Yeah. I mean, um, but he has... Oh, bless him. Oh. I love him so much. Yeah, uh, but he has been slamming models, and not in that kind of way, right, um, on social media for doing totally inappropriate things, mm -hmm. right? And he's saying that we should start kicking people out of gyms, okay? And it's not necessarily for the, the hogging the equipment. Oh, no, right? I've seen some particular ones where it's, yeah. Yeah, mm. um, this one in particular, he has gone after a, an OnlyFans person. Right, um, who has seen was seen going up to the free weights, straddling them, rubbing her, you know what's it on them, mm -hmm. to the point where he showed the video of her doing this, and I had to blur it. Yeah, because you could see it winking at you. Yeah, I've I've seen that. There's also ones where they're deliberately doing um, workouts and stretches that will um, show things, demonstrate that what they could do in the bedroom. You know, when you're taking the wide leg press, and I mean wide. I have no problem with that, because you have to do your practice. So Sarah Kaus is the lady that he was mm -hmm. highlighting, um, who has um, 784,000 followers on Instagram. <sighs> and then the post of going, and don't forget to link to my OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you're quite clearly doing that to get your minge out. One of the other ones that he kind of gets, and, and, or more dominantly earlier on, it was um, guys changing in the gym, mm -hmm. f uh, taking photographs, because the lighting in the bathroom, uh, uh, the changing room of the gym is, is good, so you want to catch yourself. But there's people, like, butt naked ne behind them or walking past, and if they get upset, they get have a problem with the person. Uh -huh. It's it's a changing room. Exactly, and a lot of the changing rooms I've now seen have got on the little mirror saying, "Please respect other people's privacy when taking selfies." Absolutely, which I think is right. Yeah. Um, now, Joey himself is not a, a, afraid of a gym. No, we have a couple of pictures to prove that. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, I'm going to need a moment. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, bless him. Oh. 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 Just go and have a wank. I really do. I need one now. Oh. That, that's, that's, yeah. He's a handsome guy. That, that's a bit of me, that is. That, none of that is you. Oh. No, I mean. <laughs> oh. That's not you, miss. <laughs> um, oh. So, yeah. And if, like, miss, you oh. want to. Sp All right. Oh. Why not share it with us at the social media, which is at the Could TV? Yeah, um, and that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Oh. Well, now, there's more of that. Um, this is the best episode ever. This is a oh. story about a gentleman in a hotel room in Thailand. Okay. Okay. Um, who was extremely drunk when he got back? Okay, and was his antics were so voracious, fell through the ceiling. I'll throw his floor into the ceiling of a downstairs business. Okay. Right. Um, and it's a 51-year-old who has not been named. Okay. Okay. Um, who, the room at the Freelancer Hotel. Not been named, but in, photographed. Covered in poo. So, yeah, the um, adjacent internet cafe, where he plowed through the, the ceiling, realised something was amiss. They heard lots of noises. Right? Um, lots of... Like, screaming and screaming, squelching. Screaming. Agonised noises, moaning noises, and then falling through the, the ceiling. Um, the police that attended the scene have said, we have some ideas about what he was doing in the room to make it that dirty, but nothing was illegal. 
It's a private matter and he needs to sort that out with the hotel. Right. Because when they went into the room, it was covered in poop. This wasn't he had an accident in the bathroom, fell through. It was all over the place. How long had you been staying there? Well, this was just in one night. But he'd obviously got home and had a particular thing in mind. He was enjoying himself a lot with the poo. But... Fell through. Left a mess. That much to weaken the floor oh, no, in was... one night? No, no, no. It wasn't the fact he was just piles of poo and him swimming in it. I was going to say, how much could he... He, he was being but... very vigorous with himself and went through the floor. Wow. While covered in his own poo. Wow. I say in his own poo. We just have to say poo. We're not sure it was just his own. I was going to say, if it was that much to weaken the floor, he probably shipped it in, but if... No, no, he didn't have an elephant in the corner <laughs> being fed laxative. <laughs> OK, Nelly. OK, Nelly, have some more licorice. It'll be fine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I, I really don't know what to say about that. I kind of changed the mood a little bit. It, it, yeah. Because now, knowing that you fancy Joey Swall, this is why I put the order, this story in this order, every time you do that, you're going to have to think of a fat 51-year-old falling through a floor covered in poo. And that's all from The Buzz this week. Thanks for that, Mike. I really, uh, really appreciate you ruining the small pleasure I have, which is wanking about bodybuilders. <laughs> anyway. Small is the word there, missed. But stick around, because coming up next we have a game to play in our Game of the Week. Welcome back, and yes, you're watching Chewing the Cud. And we're going to play a little game for this... What, what, what are you doing? Play with myself. Okay. Well, we want to play together. There's a game for you. No, what I was doing, you don't. <laughs> game of the week. Now we're going to play a game with Mike of Ooze a Kazoo. Yep, that, that's a kazoo. Ooze a Kazoo, use a Kazoo. Indeed. <laughs> right, you ready for the first one? I am ready, willing, and able. <laughs> that might be the song and the artist of the moment, Pink Pony Club by Chaperone. It was indeed. Yay! Well done. well done, you. Well, to be fair, I have just downloaded a shed load of remixes of that. <laughs> OK. OK, ready for the next one? Oh, yes, please. Struggling with this one. Can you can you uh, give me the chorus as a clue? Have a clue what it is. I I really don't have a clue. I'm sorry. I I I, I, I don't know if it's the quality of your performance or. It was Lloyd. Dedication to my ex. What? Who? No, no, the song Dedication to My Ex. Mm, I, I, the, the Little Mix one? No, that's a different song. Right. Anyway, next one. OK. <laughs> I've done the wrong song. I started to do one song and then it merged into another. Well, if, if, if you can't keep it straight, how am I going to? I can't, I can't even breathe straight. Right, let's try that again. <laughs> would, would this be three artists? 
Maybe. Including Ariana Grande. Maybe. And, and, and Nicki Minaj. Maybe. And Jesse J. Maybe. Um, that's the one. Bang, bang. See, what the people at home have just gone, what's he saying, what's that? The gallery just told him the answer. That's why I went, that's the one. Well, I'm getting there saying it by accident. We know. We know you're special. <laughs> right. I do know that song. Uh-huh. Just helped when someone gave you the answer. They... It was on the tip of my tongue. Uh-huh. I wasn't stalling at all. Uh-huh. Of course not. Right. Next one. <laughs> Now, if you've just tuned in, he's not gone completely balmy. This apparently is a popular song from the Hit Parade that you should be able the to recognise. The Hit Parade? Now explain to everyone born after 1974 what the Hit Parade is. I was born after 1974, thank you very much, by a long chalk. Yeah, yeah, three days. Disgraceful. Anyway, I have no idea what that song is, and I'm not too sure anybody who's born in the era of it being popular knows what that song is. Edge of Saturday Night by the Blessed Madonna. You don't even know what that song is, do you? I, I know who the Blessed Madonna is. You know the song? Um, no, I don't know that song. Yeah, it's modern. At least not in that inversion, anyway. OK, next one. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a theme tune to an old Dennis Waterman sitcom? <laughs> it sounds like a theme tune. <laughs> oh dear. That, that really sounded like an old Dennis Waterman um, sitcom. And who's Dennis Waterman? Uh, he wrote the theme tune, sang the theme tune, the guy that they were making, taking the mickey out of for that. What was he in? Lots and lots. Um, uh, uh, the guy from Minder. <laughs> okay. Anyway. A very, very famous guy in, in, in the it 90s, was so I'm told. Church. Love it when you call my name. Charlotte Church. Voice of an angel, Charlotte Church. Wow. Married a rugby player with beautiful legs, Charlotte Church. Charlotte Church or the rugby player? Rugby player. Right. Yeah, OK. I, yeah, I, I was never somebody who followed her muse, music. OK. Um. <laughs> Is it me, or is yes. it the performance? It's you. Because, <laughs> again, the gallery was singing along. I, were they? Yeah, yeah. I thought they were just mud, mumbling no, no, words no, like no, they no, usually no, do. Paul was doing it right. Paul, Paul, Paul was doing something right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the world has ended. It's modern music. I don't... I listen to the classical stuff. OK, it was Guess. Guess? Featuring Billie Eilish by Charlie XCX. It's that whole, you want to guess the colour of my underwear. You want to know what I got. Oh, I know that now. song. Yeah. So does Paul, who was singing along with it. He just wasn't singing the words, so he couldn't get the song. I just don't recognise either of your musical ability. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what's the thing? If, if you, 
if you're the person that's crazy in the room, you're the only sane person in the room, maybe you're the only crazy person in the room. Mm. Um, All birds of a feather flock together. No, not I think necessarily. that makes me the scarecrow. Yeah, anyway. Um, how about... <laughs> You know, I don't ever get the feeling people are at home screaming at the TV like they know the answer. They do. I, I get messages in. Oh the, oh, the the inbox. Letters pouring from our tens of fans. Letters. <laughs> Letters. We get we get DMs when this show goes out. Oh, do people we? People going, why is he not getting it? Is he purposefully playing up? People think you're making this up that you don't get them. That's not the case. <laughs> no, I know. I'm sure it's not the... Okay. They, I'm imagine, sure if they're imagine. turning on Shazam to listen to your kazoo playing, well, Shazam Shazam's not getting music. it either. Shazam doesn't work on live music. <laughs> it says on there, this does not work on live music. Anyway, right. Imagine this part of my body was a radio. Uh-huh. Right, and I was surrounded at Christmas trees, but small ones. Okay. What would I be? Radio head at Christmas? Radio head and and what kind of small tree? plastic trees? Fake plastic trees, but I'll let you off. Alright. <laughs> to be fair, I should know that one. You you should have known yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it um, is about your musical ability, because that is one I would have known. If you no, because <sighs> it's it's a shame when it. people's talent lets them down. You wouldn't know what talent was if it came and mooned you. You'd be scared of going, what's that thing? Oh, that's a bum, apparently. I've not seen one of them in many years. <laughs> well, after that torture, because um, of kazoo playing, um, we'll have a little break and see you soon. Welcome back to Chewing the Cuds, and now we go to our favourite homemaker and home wrecker. It's Everyone Loves Fanny. Everybody loves Fanny. It's true. I, I am a homemaker, not a home wrecker, though. Mm. How are you, Mist? It's been a while. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm fine. How are you, dear? I, I'm dear. So I'm talking to a f old woman. Um, um, I'm, I'm, well, <laughs> if that fits. I, I have heard from Mike on the grapevine that you are into medieval things. Um, I, I do like a few old oldie worldy things. Yes. Make believe with dinosaurs and, and dragons and fish. Um, yes, very much so. Yes, well, I thought I'd cater to that and, and abandon my usual um, ingredient of choice of semen uh -huh. and show you how to make a lovely mead. Oh, I, I, I do like a bit of home brewing. Oh, well, that's good. Um, so I thought I'd share with you some mead. Oh, lovely. So it's a simple mead. It's very few ingredients for a mead, OK? Um, the first thing I've given you is a vessel. OK. Now, in this vessel, is some tepid water. Slightly warm, tepid water. Oh, OK. You feel, it, you feel the warmth? It, it, I can feel the warmth. It should, be, it should be the same sort of warmth as your, your body. It feels like if you were holding it while you peed into the bottle, that's what it would feel like. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Yes, we, I have had moments on the motorway. Why are you stroking yours like that? I'm, I'm just displaying the bottle. <laughs> you, you were... Displaying the bottle. You were doing something quite furtive. Was I? You, you were. You were going like that. Well, maybe that's your mind, Mr. Wishful thinking, what can we say, Fanny? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, remove your lid. OK. OK. And uh, the, the main thing in, in mead is honey. Uh, yes, I, I believe so. so I, I I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fa au fait with it enough to know that. OK. So I've given you a jar of bee bomb juice. Mm-hmm. OK. And you want to get some bee bomb juice. It's fresh. Can you hear that pop? Oh. Mm. Like I've only tampered with it slightly. Um, so what I want you to do is put some of your bee bomb juice into the slightly tepid water. Uh, okay. How much now, would some be? We're, we're going to put in about half the jar, but not all in one step. OK. OK. So what we're going to do is, I've given you a spoon to help. Mm -hmm. we'll just do some pouring, OK, like this. OK, and then when you're getting, you've got a good amount in, slow down with your pouring. OK. Scoop with the spoon and pop it back in the jar, and that'll stop you getting a sticky rim. I, I, I'm i not too sure I've got the skills for it. I always seem to be doing uh, liquidy things over by the electronics. OK. 
I, I, I think you might have been instructed by Mike to kill me. Oh no, yeah, he has given that instruction, but he said something about cyanide. Um, now, once you have some of the water, some of the honey in the water, mm -hmm. okay, it, it will just sit there at the bottom quite happily. Okay. So we need to swirl it, not shake it, swirl it swirl. to mix it. Okay. okay. Is this with the lid on? With the lid on, just because of electrics and moisture. Mm -hmm. Already whinged already. <laughs> Uh, are we talking a, a, a hard a centrifugal vigorous, a vigorous, force? A or? Vigorous. You want it to, to do this. When you spin it, you want it Ooh, to do like pretty firm. Oh, then. Oh, it's got to be a good mix because you want it to mix. I, this is reminding me of a weekend long, long ago. He never called me back. No, if you're wanking him off like that, he won't. It's not a joystick. You're not playing a computer game in the 90s. You're not playing Pong. <laughs> Sorry, that just gave me a flashback to my first time. Um, I'm not going to say any more than that. Yeah. Carry on, Fanny. On your own. Um, so once, you've dis once that's dissolved, you add some more. Oh, OK. OK, because I said you want about half a jar of, of honey in here. OK. Because this is not just going to be the flavour, this is also going to be the fuel for the fermentation process. Ew. Oh, yes, because that's sugars. It's sugar. So turning into alcohol. Exactly. So fermentation is caused by yeast. Mm -hmm. okay? And what yeast does is it's a very clever little organism. It creates alcohol to kill off other bacteria and competitors for the food source of sugar. Mm -hmm. Now the downside of that is it's also poisonous to itself. So after a while, it kills itself, mm -hmm. um, which is which is wonderful. Um, but again, once you've got that that in there, we're going to give it a good smell <laughs> to give it a good more shaky, shaky. What, swirly, 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 not swirly, shaky, swirly. shaky. Now, once you've done that, you want to top some of that up with some some water. Now, is this tepid as well? This is cool. Cool. Okay. Um, it doesn't need to be warm, really. Um, it just needs to be room temperature water. So you want to get this up, but leave yourself a good inch or two, okay? Because as it as it ferments, it will cause gas. Yes. Okay. Now, once you've got a, a a lovely mess like that. It looks a bit like someone's pee in a bottle. It bubble. does, quite a bit. And for that person, I would like to say, drink more water. <laughs> um, now, once you've done that, you should have... Oh, bollocks, I'll drop something. Um, once you've done that, um, you want to pop the lid back on and give it another swirl. And, and more swirly, swirly. Swirl just to make sure it's fully mixed. I could give this to my doctor, and I'm sure the results would be quite amusing for them. I think the, the results would be diabetes. <laughs> um, so once you're happy with the, the amount that it's mixed... OK, oh, I've still got a bit of a lumpy bit at the bottom. OK, do, do you want to just try and do what I do, right? Instead of, of doing that whole swinging it around like a centrifuge, you want to twirl it like that. Oh, like, like, a, like, like it's... Um, like a brandy glass. Yes, swirling, as I instructed in the first place. Now, um, once you've done that, we're going to take the lid off. And now we this need... really is fine to every weekend. We need to introduce a yeast. Mm -hmm. Now, in the oldie worldy times, when there were dinosaurs and dragons and things, and people rolling natural 20s, we had them... We just left things out in the, in, in the air, and natural yeasts would get in and, and ferment. Um, more modern yeasts are specially engineered to survive alcoholic contents so they can get stronger. Mm -hmm. okay? We're going to go down the natural route. Are, are we going to use a bit of mouldy bread or something? We're, we're going to use something yeasty. Mm -hmm. okay? So in your cupboard you have a little pot. Oh no, I, I, okay, you can see where we're going now. Well, it's yeast. Mm. Go, see. Yeast harvested from one of your sons again? This is yeast from my own vaginal discharge, oh. from my yeast infection. Now, because this is a natural yeast, it means that the beer it produces, or the mead it produces, won't be very alcoholic, because it's not been specially designed. Okay? Um, in fact, pop a bit of yoghurt in it and it'll die. However, it will make a mead. So all you want to do is I've given you the right amount. So I just want you to tip in your, your, your yeasty discharge. I mean, give it a sniff if you... Uh, to be honest, I, I was expecting something a bit more lumpy, though there are lumps in it. In fact, little bits of what I think is tissue paper. No, 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 that's um, lining. Um, so, I ha once you've got that in, because it, it will naturally separate, so you just need to give it another swirl. Oh, oh, look at the leftovers. Look at the leftovers in there. Give it a smell. Uh, I, I think you should give that to the doctor to put in a Petri dish. He's already seen it, he thinks it's fine. Um, so, then all you have to do with this is you just leave it, okay? You have to burp it, though, on a daily basis. 
Oh, because then... we don't have any of those valve things. Because there's in no the airlock in there, okay? Yeah. Um, and the purpose why we do it this way is it because it leaves it slightly gassy mm. inside, okay? With airlocks, it will try to make a still mead, but this way you'll have a slightly sparkling mead. Oh, fancy. Okay. Yes. Um, so once a day, you just or twice a day, you just go over and you just give it a little open and then close it again. You don't need to do much, that's it. But that's why we call it burping. That's why it's called it burping. Um, we should really call it being hissed. Because, because it will hit, sound like more of a hiss. Because it hisses and after you drink a bottle like this, you'll be very, very hissed. So yeah, and it's, it's that simple to make a meat. Uh, how, and how long do you keep that for? Is it like wine? You can leave like, it brewing for about about a month? About two weeks, 14 days. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, that's quite quick. Yeah, it's very quick. Um, and then what we suggest you do is you then, you siphon it off. Because mm -hmm. okay? as you can see, there's, there's little bits of um, my, my, my wall lining um, in there still. Um, so little bits of, of flesh. Um, so we need to siphon that off to get rid of the lumps of my vaginal walls. I make wine at home, so it's just about sticking a hose in there and sucking on the end quite vigorously until you leave all the or remaining... Or you can delicately, delicately t tilt and pour. Oh, no. That also works. No. OK, because you're not making a big keg of it, you're making a small vessel. Oh, I always do things not by halves. I go, I go for a full barrel's worth. I can believe it. So, yeah, um, so I, 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 I will send Mike over in a moment with a, a pre-made bottle for you to try. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll enjoy it. it, it we'll enjoy be it. Delicious, I'm sure. It will be delicious because everybody loves Fanny. Everybody loves Fanny. So, what you've just made with Fanny, she sent me a bottle, right, and said, you know what, try it. There is some head on that, isn't there? I got it shaken up in my bag. In my bag. So, showing up. Right, so it's mead. Mead. It's been lovely fermented. It's a slightly sparkling one, apparently. A sparkling mead. Slightly sparkling. I, 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 think that, I think that means it's not done properly. No, you can get slightly sparkling mead. Is that from the champagne re re uh, no, region it, of no, the No, because then it would be factory. champagne mead. Um, no, it's a slightly sparkling. You can get slightly sparkling meads. Because all the mead is, is it's beer basically made with a honey. Yes. So, Oh, look at that. That's not bad half half. Which half is like that? Small half? Or I'll, I'll have the little half. Okay. okay. Well, chin chin, cheers. eyeballs. <laughs> Seven years bad sex for you then? At least I'm getting sex. Yeah, not bad. A right. bit watery, but yeah, all right. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, somebody enjoyed it. Oh, that's a good drop. <laughs> oh, I'll have one of them again. <laughs> you finishing that? Uh, no. Do the thing then. Fine, fine. OK, well, um, I hope you've enjoyed the show and taken many tips from Fanny on how to make yourself a delicious, delicious beverage. Um, and you hopefully enjoy it as much as uh, Mike does. What, some yoghurt now? But that's almost the end of the show. Remember to look out for our social media at The Could TV. And if you want to catch up on previous episodes, it's Chewing a Cud on YouTube. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. I want another one of them. Call up Fanny then, I'm sure she'll oblige. I'm going to call up Fanny.